everybody, welcome to another Tune of the Month. Happy July, happy summer. I hope you're all staying safe and healthy. It's been a crazy few months, uh, but weirdly, uh, for the YouTube fiddler, not a whole lot has changed. I'm still here with tunes. You're still there to learn them from the comfort of your own home. So uh, this month I have for you uh, one of the most summery tunes I think I've ever heard. This is an old time reel called Ducks on the Mill Pond. And that's the tune if you're just listening. Thanks for stopping by. I'll see you next month. And if you're ready to play, let's do it. Okay, so this is an old time reel in D. Now I've got something kind of cool going on. This is a great trick I'd love to show you because I think you'll like it a lot. When you have old time tunes in D, well, when you have old time tunes in general, a lot of times we retune the strings, right? We've done a couple of um, alternate tuning tunes here on Tune of the Month in the past. This is a cool tuning. I have my top strings like you would expect, but I have raised my bottom G string up a whole step to an A. So I now from the bottom have A, D, A, E. And what's really great about this is if I just play, you might be thinking, wow, Mara, your violin sounds great. It's so ringy. And what's happening is even though I'm not actually playing this low, now low A string, it's ringing, it's picking up all the fifths and all the uh, sympathetic vibrations from the stuff I am doing. So anytime you have an all time tune in D, it's kind of nice to bump that bottom string up if you can logistically. If you're in the middle of a show, it might take too much time to retune. I can't play it like this in, in shows because I play it in a medley with other tunes that are not in D. But if you're playing all D all the time, raise that bottom string, it will give you so much extra um, beautiful sparkly stuff. This tune is even the extra bonus because the tune itself doesn't go down on the lower string, so I don't even have to adjust my fingerings to accommodate the retuned string. I can just stay up here and get the benefit of the vibrations without any extra work. If you have a, a D tune that does go down and use the lower strings, you'll just have to refinger a little bit like we did in, in past tunes of the month that were retuned. Okay, so let's learn this tune. I'm gonna play a little bit slowly and I'm gonna play for a second just the melody without all the extra double stops so you can hear what the tune is and then we'll put the juicy stuff back in. All right, so A section, it's a very short tune, here we go. That's two eights. Let's do it again. Two, three, part one, and part two. One prime, ending. So you hear me using the lingo identifying the parts of the section like we do on every tune of the month. All A sections and B sections will have in them a part one, the theme, part two, which is an answer. Part one will come back. Sometimes we mess with it a little bit, this tune does, and then there's an ending. Et voila. Okay, so part one of this tune is just about as easy as you get. Up and down the scale. Do, re, mi, re, do. Go ahead and do that just for practice. Yeah, okay, when you land back on that do, now it's part two. And that's almost like a doubled version of what just happened, right? In fact, that pattern I call it Fera Jaca, because it is. Are you sleeping? Are you sleeping? Or if you sing it in French like I do, Fera Jaca, Fera Jaca. Fera Jaca. 
And notice my little bowing pattern there. I have mostly separate bows for these old time tunes. But a nice little three note glide slur down that at the bottom. So separate, down, glide. Yeah, do that part two one more time. Frere Jacques, down, glide. All right, we've talked about glide slurs in the past tunes of the month. Basically, it's a three note slur that's gonna glide up bow, which is why I call it a glide slur. It's not just slur three, it's move through your bow and make it this big, beautiful, sweeping gesture. Okay, so that's part one and part two. Part one's gonna come back. Here it's a little, we call it part one prime. It's basically the same, but with a tiny little change. All right, and if I play that plain without the decoration. All right, so rather than just, now we're gonna one, fa, mi, re, do. Check that out, do the super simple one prime. Okay, well that would be a little too boring, so we're gonna decorate. Decorate. All right, do you see how I did that? I added a little triplet, rather than just playing my first finger plain, I go triple it. And then I have a little slur over. Do it again, part one prime. Yeah, and then the ending. And it goes back. Do it again, ending. All right, and again, it's mostly separate bows, but here I'm using my one of my favorite bowing patterns. I call it the hook three. One, two, three is separate. Now I slur three. And I have two extra to make it up. Don't worry if you've never talked about or seen hook three before. We've done it in past tunes of the month in detail. So if you want more practice, you can go check those out. But let's do this ending again. Separate, two, three, slur, extra. And then we can resolve it. Do it one more time ending. One, two, three, slur, extra, One more time for good measure. One, two, If you need to do any of those parts again, just go ahead and rewind the video, play it with me as many times as you like. I love being your digital practice buddy. But for now, we're gonna put the whole thing together. Pretty simple, just keep track of your roadmap. Part one, part two, one prime and an end. Here we go, simple. Part one goes up and down the scale. Ready, and go. Part two for a shotgun. Down, slur. One prime, Ba decorate. letting it speed up naturally. I'm not really thinking about going faster. I'm thinking about just letting it move and letting it dance a little bit. It should stay easy, right? Even when I'm playing a more moving tempo, I still feel like I'm playing it more or less at a medium speed, right? That's the ease. Okay, so we're gonna juice that up in just a second, but let's do the B section. So we have the whole melody, all right? I'll play it slowly first. Listen for this part one, part two, part one ending thing because that will save you a lot of time, yeah? All right. cloud ending, the same ending that you already learned in the A section, you now also get to use in the B section. Yay, free ending. That's such a great thing to notice. Lots of tunes do it. Keep a lookout. All right, so this uh, first part, I am putting a little bit of the juicy double stop hints in there because this is what we call an old timey scoop. We've done it before. 
right where you scoop the lower string in on an up bow slur, it goes one, two, three. Alright, do you feel that? Alright, and the rhythm is really key here. The first note is a dotted quarter, so it has three eighth notes in it, which means I count one, two, three, and scoop. So if you use those words, your rhythm will always be right on. Ready? Two, three, part one, scoop. One, two, three. And I actually went ahead and did part two there. Sorry. It just flows so naturally. Try it again. Part one and part two. Here's the scoop. Two, three, four. One, two, three, and scoop. Alright, so that part two. So the big thing to notice there, we've talked about this before, I'm feeling it as a, I call it a scale with a hole in it. I'm using only open first finger and third finger. I don't actually use that second finger, it skips over that note. Try that part two, turn around with me again. Ready? And... Time for good measure. Did you notice the bowing? It's an upper octave. One, two, three, slur. Do it with the bowing again. One, two, three, slur. Extra. Yeah, let's put part one and part two together because it flows so naturally. Starts with a scoop. One, two, three, and scoop. And part two. Good. One more time. Two. Three, four, one, two, three, and scoop. Okay, now we have part one prime. It's almost the same as the beginning, just a little different. Instead of the scoop, I have a high neighbor. One, two, three. Yeah, that's a nice one, isn't it? Do it again. Three, four, one, two, three. And notice I can use a hook three here too. One, two, three, slur, extra. And it glides me through that top high part. Do you get one prime? Three, four, one, two, three, slur, extra. And you already know this ending. Yay, cloud ending in both sections. So now let's do part one prime and the cloud ending that you already know from the A section. Ready? And one, two, three. Ending. Yeah, do it one more time for one prime. Ready? And one, two, three. Okay, so guess what? We've already kind of put the whole B section together because we've done the front half and the back half. Let's now put two halves together. Starts with a scoop. Ready? Uh -huh. One, two, three, and scoop. Part two. One prime. High neighbor. Cloud ending. Do it again. One, two, three, and scoop. One, two, three. And when you end, can just stay put there on that root key of D, we end on D. Awesome! So that's the whole B section. You can rewind the tape, play with it a few times, um, but now we're going to go back, put the whole tune together, and get a little bit of that extra drone juice going on. Right? I keep calling it the juice today, I don't know why. Good stuff, the extra good stuff that makes it sound really cool and old timey. So basically what's going on, almost all of my open strings, <laughs> will ring with the D chord, right? And when I have my fingers on the E string, then it's also agreeing with that D chord. So I can drone any neighbor double stop that I want and make this thing sound great. So here's part one of the A section. So you see I'm just playing my neighbor strings. Here's my octave. Now it suddenly sounds so much old timey, right? Now we can also do some other things with that rather than just four quarter notes. I could.
could add some string crossing. That's using the same double stops, only rather than playing them together as quarter notes, I'm now crossing strings as an eighth note. Crossing. That's a great little variation. Let's do that again, the string crossings. Ready? And in fact, when I'm crossing, I'm catching both of the uh, lower strings, getting a double drone. Do it again, string crossings with a double drone. Ready? And... I could do with that is play with the rhythm a little bit rather than um, straight double stops quarter notes. Another thing that's easy to do but sounds great is make the first one a dotted quarter. One, two, three. And then answer it with the string crossings. Here I did that. Do it again with me. Three, four, one, two, three. And cross it, cross it. One more time. Three, four, one, two, three. Okay, so those are three little variations, not really changing the melody, just changing how you're accompanying it, which drones with the string crossings and with the rhythm. And that already gives you tons of variation on just that first little part one. And the reason I go for that right away is it's because the simplest part of the piece. Bum, 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 bum. It needs something. It's several things, in fact. The simpler the part of the tune is, the more you can find little ways to play with it. All right, so let's go on. When we do that part one A section from now on, you can pick whichever version you want or make up your own. That's even better. Change how you do the drones, change the rhythm subtly. Use it around that scale. Dum, bum, 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 bum. That's what we want to hear. Ready? Two, three, whole A section. <laughs> as we played through, maybe you heard them. So I started out with those same uh, little variations that we did a second ago. And then, when I did that, I was also droning. But the thing I was droning, in addition to my open D string, was I was leaving down my third finger, glue finger. So that drones all the way through. I'm giving you a rare backstage view of my hand here. So let's do that part two. Do you see how I do that? And I get that D droning, a double root D droning through the whole thing, and it's so powerful. Do that part two with the double D drone. Ready? And... Now when you get to part one prime, you can do the same thing again. Do you see how I left my third finger down that whole time? And then the ending. I drew my open string here. When I put my third finger down, I leave it down. And that gives me that second, I'm trying to show how to, there you go. And we're back to the beginning. Let's do a couple A sections, see if you can get those drones going when you have part one. Take your pick of variation. Ready? Two, three, and... Up 
as many of the lower strings as drones as I can to double and triple my drone. Now you don't want it to accent. If I'm going, that's not good. That's not going to dance. So you do it lightly and easily. And if you don't really pick up the bottom strings, that's okay because they're ringing anyway. You may not be able to hear it over the internet microphones and speakers on your computer, but if you tune your um, G string up at home and play it, you'll hear it under your ear, all the extra vibrations you pick up with that low O string, even if your bow never touches it. Okay, so that's how to play with some drones on the A section. Let's look at the B section. So here the scoop is still in play, only I would start with a drone to begin with. And there to get the scoop, all I have to do, I play two strings. Now for the scoop, I'm gonna release the top string and then pick it up. Everybody see how I did that? We've also done scoops in past tunes of the month with in great detail. So you can pick it up quickly here, or if you want a little more practice, go check out some past old time tunes. Here we go. One, two, three. So for those, I'm using the adjacent open string drone. Works really well. Try it again. Scoop and then drone your adjacent lower string. Ready? And scoop. Same thing. When you get to your ending, you have adjacent lower string. And glue your third finger. Yeah, and that's basically all you need to do on the B section because the melody is so much more interesting on the soaring high stuff. Let's do the whole B section, put in all the drones you can. Ready? And. with not just in this old time tune but any old time tune you like playing um, the retuning you don't have to do it just gives you extra vibrations to play with but as always I want you guys to take these ideas and apply them to lots more tunes than just ducks on the mill pond I like ducks on the mill pond but I don't really care if you do or not I care that you take the skills and use them to play with the tunes that you do love so hopefully that's tons of fun uh, if you'd like to see sheet music for this and all upcoming tunes of the month, make sure you're subscribed to my newsletter. Go to my website, www.mariblack.com. Hit subscribe because every month when I send out my email newsletter, I send out the sheet music for that tune of the month as a special little hello to people who stay in touch with me regularly. And it's really fun. So if the dots help you, that's a great way to get them. On my website, you can also find albums, including my new album, Unscripted, that I was teaching some tunes from earlier this year, and we'll probably teach more. And we just get to stay in touch, which is lots of fun. Thank you guys for joining me. I will see you next month.